Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this initial segment of the fourth lecture, we will describe the, briefly the methodological differences between our approach based on Ulum al-Umran and the standard Eurocentric social science approach. We will follow the methodology in, first introduced by Ibn Khaldun, uh, which studies the process of social change as driven by communities. This approach is historical and qualitative and this is opposed to the mathematical and quantitative approach currently in use in economics. Our approach was also in use in Europe until the battle of methodologies in the late 19th century replaced it by a scientific approach to the study of human societies. Why this took place is rather complex, but very briefly, there was a century of religious warfare in Europe which led to the rejection of religion as a basis for organizing society and the creation of social science as uh, in the vacuum left by religion. Uh, this rejection of religion led to the idea that science is the only valid source of knowledge and we should use a scientific methodology for studying society. But this led to a deeply deficient uh, way of approach to social science Science is basically a study of the external world, which is inanimate and determinate and subject to laws. Uh, uh, the European methodology came to disregard our internal subjective experiences as source of knowledge. And uh, this internal subjective experience is the central mainspring for understanding human behavior. This was replaced by some rationality axioms which are not related to our subjective experiences. And these axioms are based on rejection of God, afterlife and judgment. And therefore they depict the human behavior as maximization of pleasure, at least for rationality. Also the understanding emerged based on evolutionary ideas that we are just a kind of animals. There is no meaning to life. Uh, life is a jungle of cutthroat competition governed only by the survival of the fittest. And these are the ideas on which economic theory in particular and social sciences in general are built. Obviously, this is dramatically in conflict with Islamic ideas. So in order to create an alternative, we must reject the axiomatic theory of rational behavior and instead start with an Islamic theory of behavior, where we have uh, great developments have been made in the recent era in building on the Islamic intellectual heritage to derive complex models of human behavior which incorporate the heart and the soul and the desires and the mind. This is a picture of the model of uh, the human behavior which shows that we have drives towards evil and also drives towards good and the human heart is a battleground between good and evil and this is a much more complex picture of human behavior than is available in the western tradition. So we can conclude this intro portion of the fourth lecture by the remark that a theory of human behavior is fundamental to the construction of social sciences. That is the basic unit on which society is built. And excluding subjective human experience as unscientific, which it is because our human experience is unique, non-replicable, so it is not scientific. But excluding this leads to a dramatically wrong picture of human behavior, our own intellectual heritage offers us a rich and complex understanding of human behavior. And we can use this foundation to create an alternative theory of economics and also rebuild the social sciences. Uh, one uh, side remark is that economic theory is exactly the theory of the nafs ammara the commanding soul. It uh, tells us to obey the desires of the nafs. And this is a spiritually stunted human being. As opposed to this, Islam's gift to mankind is an economy which allows us to make spiritual progress and is designed to create spiritual progress.